Hello, this is Rupinder Syal and welcome to Spartan Tutorials. Today we are going to talk about a very important biophysics and biochemistry technique which is isothermal titration calorimetry. It is a workhorse of protein studies, protein ligand interaction studies as well as drug binding studies whether we are talking about drug ligand interaction or drug protein interaction. So any kind of compound compound interaction studies can be monitored using this technique. It is extremely sensitive technique and highly quantitative and a wealth of data is generated using this technique. So let's talk about what is it all about. So this is the basic setup of isothermal titration calorimetry or ITC as it is known. So we have two cells. We have one cell which is known as reference cell. It usually contains only the buffer. And then we have the sample cell which has our protein and later on we add the ligand. The ligand is usually injected by this automatic syringe. Okay. We also have the stirrer in this to ensure proper mixing of ligand when we add it. These are covered by an adiabatic jacket. So it does not allow any heat exchange from the outside to the inside or vice versa. There is the adiabatic jacket. So highly controlled atmosphere. So the name isothermal titration calorimetry refers to this main keyword which is isothermal. The sample cell and reference cells are kept at same temperature. If there is any temperature difference or heat difference between sample cell and reference cell which is usually caused by protein ligand interaction or ligand ligand interaction that is detected by this ITC instrument. So here we have the heaters which maintain the same temperature in the sample cell and the reference cell we have appropriate sensors. Okay. So here we are adding the ligand and protein is getting occupied with the ligand it is binding to the ligand which leads to some production of heat or absorption of heat by the system and then we detect that heat change. So we see if we plot microcalories per seconds versus time as the protein and ligand bind. So here it is absorbing the heat and in this case we are seeing a dip in the microcalorie per second with relegated to time. Then we add more and more ligand usually a series of dilutions of various ligand concentrations are done. So as more and more ligand binds the protein becomes saturated and these are basically multiple various concentrations of ligands being used and you can see as the protein becomes saturated the amount of heat difference becomes minimal and this is later on integrated and then we get molar ratio versus kilocalorie per mole data. This can be used to get three values one is KD which is the affinity of the protein for that ligand usually in the nanomolar or micromolar ranges usually in the nanomolar ranges we also get the molar ratio and the stoichiometry so for example how many ions or how many ligands are binding to the protein and we are also getting the delta H which is the enthalpy change of the reaction and this is extremely sensitive technique so very very small changes are measured by this technique this is an example of one of the instruments so this is uh, mal1 analytical instruments uh, ITC instrument which is called microcal ITC 200 this is you can see the sample injection here and all other controls for buffers and sample cell and reference cell here and here I want to just point out two studies where they use ITC to describe and measure uh, protein ligand interactions so in this first study we have the ITC profile of the beta prism domain of the Vibrio Collery Cytolysin Protein or VCC. It is a beta barrel pore forming protein and one of the activities of this protein it is that is that it is acting as a lactin so it is a carbohydrate binding protein and one of the residues which was important for binding the lactin is the 
aspartate 617. So in this study, what the researchers did was they measured the ITC profiles of the wild type beta prism domain and the mutated beta prism domain. And you can see that the interaction basically vanishes when they use the mutant version. And here they can get nice molar ratio as well as KD and the delta H from this data for beta prism domain. Okay, so this is one example. In another example, they, they looked at calcium bound annexin protein from cotton. And here also they are looking at the ITC profile without the substrate and vesicles which they bind and in the presence. So they are getting this again nice profile when they add different amounts of concentrations of ligands and they can integrate the data and get an idea about the stoichiometry. They also got the molar ratio where they found out that actually it is five calcium ions which are binding to this protein. Okay, so far so good. So ITC is pretty good at estimating the dissociation constant. It is very good at estimating the stoichiometry and it is pretty good at detecting the enthalpy change of protein ligand interaction. But there are some limitations to this technique as well. Although it is pretty uh, sensitive and extremely powerful, but there are limitations to it as well as is the case with any technique. The first limitation is that in case of very weak binding, sometimes we need to have very high protein concentrations. And this is sometimes not feasible because of solubility or aggregation issues of the protein. And another is if there is very strong binding, then we need very low protein concentration to detect it using ITC. And this usually produces very weak signals which are below the detection range of most of the ITC instruments. But apart from that, for most normal proteins and normal circumstances, it is a pretty useful technique. There is a huge wealth of data that can be obtained using ITC and I would encourage you to read more about it and see if you can apply it to your research. I hope you found this information useful. Let me know if you have any doubts or questions about this technique in the comment section below. Please do subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Till the next time we meet, take care and bye-bye.